Now once you've pinned your insects and you're ready to place them somewhere safe and secure, uh, you probably want to locate uh, something that's called a Cornell drawer. It's probably the pricey end, the high end uh, way of preserving insects, but this is an example of a cor uh, Cornell drawer. It's made of wood, it has a glass top, uh, they have a tight seal which prevents insects uh, from accessing uh, the box and they have label racks on the front so that you can label your insects and you know what's in the drawer. The beauty of the glass is that you can actually hang Cornell drawers and use them as art. Now when we look inside the Cornell drawer, what you'll notice is that this one in particular uh, has what we call collection boxes, which you see here. And this is where we keep our insects. Now the purpose for doing this is this lets you organize your insects. These collection boxes uh, come in a variety of different shapes from these large boxes that you see here, all the way down to the smaller units such as this. They are lined in, cord in styrofoam, which allows the insect pin, when you take the insect, you can stick it into the styrofoam and it's placed and it will not fall out. This particular Cornell drawer is not lined in styrofoam. That's what allows us to put these unit trays in here. Now you can get Cornell drawers that have styrofoam across the bottom and, th and, that, and those particular Cornell drawers you can place insects across the whole surface of the box. Now if you don't want to invest in a Cornell drawer, if you'd rather invest in something that's a little less expensive, uh, there are some alternatives such as the Schmidt box which you see here. It's made of wood also. It is, uh, the bottom is a cardboard type uh, styrofoam material which will allow you to take your insects and stick into the bottom. It has the tight seal which is always good. And something that's nice about the Schmidt box is that it's small. It's easy to place out of the way. And it is very durable so this is always good to use with kids. An even less expensive alternative is the cardboard box such as this. It's the same as the Schmidt box, but it's uh, not as uh, expensive. Uh, same idea though, it has a uh, styrofoam bottom which allows you to place your insects on the inside. And it does have some seal, but insects can get in here. Now with each of these different boxes, one thing to recognize is that these insects represent something very important to other insects, and that is food. There are certain insects that will get into these Cornell drawers and devour your insect specimens. So it's important that if you have a Cornell drawer that you have a place where you can put mothballs. Now with those mothballs you want to make sure that you secure them so they don't freely move throughout the drawer because that will destroy your insects just as well. And those fumes from the mothballs will prevent those insects or at least repel those insects from coming in and feeding on the ones that you collected. If you'd like to develop your own collection or preservation site, instead of uh, purchasing a Cornell drawer or a Schmidt box, uh, if you want another location where you can uh, preserve your insects, you can actually make your own insect drawer. Uh, basically there are just a few items that you need. Uh, one is a cardboard box that you see here. The second is a piece of styrofoam which can be purchased at a retail store uh, for a couple dollars. And basically what you do is you cut the styrofoam so that it fits down in the base of the cardboard box. And what this will enable you do, to do is to place your pinned insect specimens in the drawer or in your box and preserve them. No different than what we discussed with the Cornell drawer or the Schmidt box. However, keep in mind it's important again to place mothballs in that box or no pest strip in order to prevent other insects from getting in and feeding on your insects. Uh, on your insects. What you have here are two examples of how to preserve your insects. This is a temporary collection procedure and this is a permanent collection procedure. Let's talk a little bit about the temporary collecting procedure. What do I mean by temporary? Well the idea is that once you've collected your insects and you've pinned them, that you have to retain them somewhere until the point where you can get the appropriate labeled information on the insect. For example, if you go out and you make a collection, it is appropriate for you to come in and label a single label, such as you see here, and place your pinned, sense, pinned insects along a one row or two rows. What you notice here is that the Lepidopterans, these butterflies, have been angled in so that you can squeeze more insects into the drawer. So once you have your insects in the drawer in this temporary area, 
and you have time and you can uh, develop the appropriate labels. What you will do is you will eventually develop a single label for each insect, such as you see here, and the information that's important for these labels will be covered in another unit.